I think in my life, I somebody has offered me just like casually, like, oh yeah, anytime you want, you could come like pet parrots. I think maybe twice. So it's like, that's, you know, that's that's pretty that's big. That's still like, a lot of times. <laughs> that's more times than I have been offered to come pet parrots. I am the only person I know who offers to. Wow, that's actually really impressive. See what I mean? You're super connected. Like I'm not even. Yeah. I'm not even your only parrot connection. What do I even have? What do I even have now? I have nothing. I I stand before you, a woman with nothing. Well, to this offer. uh, this interview is going super great, right? Right from the start. The proceeds of this monetized episode are going towards I Am Dying Out Loud. Find out more in the description. I just assume, honestly, at this point, like everything I say in front of my computer is somebody's yeah. going to hear. So, yeah. um, but yeah, I, I, for so long, I had spent behind the scenes, you know, not in front of the camera, not talking about stuff. Um, just, just some dude that just happened to get connected to a bunch of really great people and communities and was just helping out. And so, you know, especially from that experience, it was like, oh man, I, I have met all these awesome people. And one of the things that I found out was as, as interconnected as it as it is sometimes, you know, um, there's still pockets of these spaces that just like people don't know about. They just don't yeah. know about, you know, and when when you can, you know, develop this friendship and have this awesome, you know, awesome group of people over here and, you know, next thing you know, you you meet somebody else that's really cool. And it's like, oh, my gosh, you've been doing this you know, for a while, how, yeah. how do more people not know about you? Like I, just building that is, is so awesome to me. So it's yeah. like, I, I'm just thrilled that you, you've been doing stuff and you've, you've been on a bunch of stuff and, and you're going to have, you know, even more cool people coming on. And yeah, so I, I'm just thrilled for that. So yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I know that you are like, you're in terms of the space, you're like 10 times more connected than I am. But if there's, Anything I can ever do to help you out. If you need yeah. a producer, if you need a writer, if you want to get started in stand up, like stand up is like the only card I have that nobody else has. That's <laughs> that's it. That's all I got. Stand up. And if you want to pet parrots, I got parrots. Uh, those I, both are like of those, cute. honestly, those those are high up there, though. It's not often in my life that I've ever been offered stuff like that, like a free drink, you know, like right. a beer, like everybody offers a beer, right. you know, um, yeah. pe you know, somebody to move like that's a little bit more special. But like. I think in my life, I somebody has offered me just like casually, like, oh, yeah, anytime you want, you could come like pet parrots, I think maybe twice. So it's like, that's, you know, that's that's pretty that's big. That's still like, a lot of times. That's more <laughs> times than I have been offered to come pet parrots. I am the only person I know who offers to. Wow, that's actually really impressive. See what I mean? You're super connected. Like, I'm not even yeah. I'm not even your only parrot connection. What do I even have? What do I even have now? I have nothing. I I stand before you, a woman with nothing. Well, this uh, this interview is going super great. Right. Right from the start. It's like, right. all right. SR comes on and just completely deflates. Sydney's ego and now we're just gonna sit here awkwardly and be like yeah um so I just have to find do do? this other parrot friend and kill them and then take their parrots <laughs> that's and that's then we're good first. I adopted these parrots they were homeless you're like you murdered their owner like they weren't homeless until you that, killed them is that blood on that parrot's wing what's going on there is that... <laughs> oh, Don't, you won't say a word will you neither will you parrot <laughs> shut up <laughs> Be quiet. You know, I actually read a story about a parrot that solved a murder case. Real, real talk. Mm, Did you hear about really? that? It made the news no, a few years ago. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so the real, I swear we'll get to the actual point. Um, <laughs> but this, so this woman, her husband was murdered and it was this big thing. Like people broke in, murdered her husband. It was a whole horrible thing. And she was going to get away with it too. But the parrot, when the cops showed up, started going like, no, put down the knife. No, put down the knife. It was like repeating the whole no murder way. scene out loud to the guy. And then it like, it did like the vocal inflections of like her being like, no, shut up, shut up. And him being like, no, please put down the knife. Don't do it. Don't do it, Stacy, or whatever her name was. Yeah. 
And and like a bird specialist got on and he was like, yeah, birds will relive traumatic moments or exciting moments. And they'll. Yeah. And so this bird, they they like they weren't going to go after her, I don't think, until the bird started like reenacting the murder. That's crazy. Yeah, that's so interesting. And it's and it's this. And this is just just because I guess we're supposed to have at least some conversation that is like in the whole atheism, <laughs> skeptic, spiritual, whatever space. So I'm going to try and tie that shit together. Yeah. Um, but like that, that it, it, it's moments like that that are so fascinating to me because the reason that that bird has that ability has nothing to do with like the meaning of those words or anything. No. Like it's just mm -hmm. it's just recreating the sounds that it heard in its environment as yep. a way to reach out to those other creatures. Yeah. And it, it's that's so cool to me. Like Isn't it that has cool? this ability. It's basically a living tape recorder and it caught your ass. You're going <laughs> to jail. <laughs> Caught you lacking. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, the, and that's why, like, I don't mind being people's crazy bird friend because they are fascinating. They're fa like every day I get to watch them be like so fascinating in my living room. It's just wild. It's just yeah. amazing. Birds, birds are a lot more interesting than, than I think people realize. There used to be every morning. Uh, this little local radio station in my area had this little like it was always like five to seven minutes long. And it, all it would do is just talk about a bird. And it was just a different random bird every single time. And it was like, this bird sounds like this. And then you just hear little bird calls. And then it'd be like, this bird also does this and looks like this. All right. That's it for us today. And like for like three years of my life, that was a, a morning routine. And it was so great. Just um, random bird facts. That's great. Yeah, just just random, just random things. You know, they've never helped me in life. I've never gotten a job or like impressed like a, a future partner or anything. There's never been anybody that's heard me say one of these at a bar and turn around and go, "What did you say about ducks? <laughs> you, you're the one." Like yes. So, but eh, you know, whatever. I mean, it's still it's just a bunch of worthless facts up here that have no value, uh, except not, for moments like this. They're not worthless to me. <laughs> they're not worthless to me. They're not worthless to them in their <laughs> They're not. They are worthless to the dog. They're absolutely that's worthless. Fair. She could not give that's fewer fair. cares. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and cats, cats probably wouldn't. Cats, wouldn't I cats, I, I don't. They're know. murderers. They're murderers. They I really don't want to say I don't like cats because I know yeah. like the internet will come for me. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All I'm gonna say is. When you walk into my house, you don't go, oh, she has yeah. birds. <laughs> right, 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 right. And that is huge. And that is huge, you know. And really, it's just the – it's the attitude. It really is. It's just I the like fact that, that so many – Right. So many so many cats are, you know, haughty. And it's not like – It's word. not all of them, you know. Good it's word. not all of them. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I do, uh, I keep a dictionary just next to me and I just flip through it right before I go on camera with people just so I sound smart. So it's like, uh, press the digitation. Uh, but, Love it. Uh, Another good word. Another but, good word. <laughs> this but, is the million dollar word podcast. Yeah. 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 We're, we're going to get to, we're going to get to something of we'll value at some point. You think anybody yeah. out there is enjoying this as much as we are? Or? That's all that matters. Yeah, that's all that that's matters. Right. That's right. <laughs> I create content for me first. And then for everybody else, like, that's right. Um, that's right. Hey, like I and subscribe, folks. You like and subscribe if you like birds, if you hate cats, yeah. or not, don't hate them, but you find them haughty. Right. And then um, uh, dogs are cool too. I like dogs. They're pretty yeah, dope. That's a good one. Throw like K-pop um, in there. Just be like, yeah, I love a lot of K-pop. That'll get you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I do. I'm pretty sure I like K-pop. <laughs> I'm almost positive I like K-pop. Um, yeah. um, I will say though. I am very curious to hear your origin story. Mm -hmm. So for anybody listening, um, you are, I would say, A, if not the poster child for the atheism, skeptic, um, humanism scene on YouTube, on Discord, I would say on Twitch. Um, and... I've noticed that you do a lot of things for a lot of people. So you're in chats, you're watching streams, you're hosting, you're, you wear a lot of hats. But then when you look at your channel, there's no videos. <laughs> and then like, so I was going through your link tree earlier and I was like, there was nothing. At first I thought I was like doing it wrong. And yet you're so heavily involved. And like, yeah. how, 
how does one get so heavily involved in everyone else's stuff and then like not work not have to create their own thing in their mind now i say that knowing that you are you have your hands on a lot of things like it's not like you don't do anything you're always doing something constantly but it's shocking to me that you can do so many things and still have just like your like your instagram there's like nothing yeah. your youtube there's nothing and yet everybody in this space knows who you are how does that how did you get involved like how did this yeah. start from the beginning like how did yeah. this even become a thing yeah yeah so the 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 necessary backstory is that uh so if if you're not watching uh, the video folks and you're you're just here in the audio I'm a pretty young guy I'm like 28 years old um so when I was a child like Facebook was was you know around at least mm -hmm. it was it was really getting going and stuff and for a long time I just didn't have anything like that I I had the MySpace for like six months. Stop. Didn't care. You know, yeah. um, finally created a Facebook in high school, used it like up until I graduated and then 10 years would go by and I wouldn't get back on. Wow. That's so, actually impressive to be so honest. For a decade, uh, the way that people would communicate with me is it would be like, hey, so on Facebook, blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, ah, oh, I just didn't see it. And they're like, oh, no worries. There's a lot of stuff on Facebook. Hey, by the way, let me find you on Facebook and we can meet up later and be like, oh, I don't have one. So uh, you can't. And they would be like, no, that's crazy. And they would like search for me. And then they would be, oh, no, okay. I, I, oh, yeah, I guess there is no way to contact you. And I'm like, no, you could text me. You know, you could always just like call my phone if you wanted. No. Uh, and no, no, they wouldn't. No, they wouldn't. No, they <laughs> no. wouldn't. It's, it was, it was amazing. Call. But yeah, yeah. But um, one day uh, as as the years went by and I started I started questioning stuff and I started really, you know, looking into uh, what was out there on YouTube and stuff. Uh, went through all the standards, you know, all the big name Hitchens, William Lane Craig stuff, you know, the Sam Harris and the Dawkins and the Dennett and the, you know, did it all right. Mm -hmm. um, started going through old episodes of, you know, AXP and all these other all these other awesome places. Uh, I mean, I, I could spend the next five hours just listing incredible content creators, honestly. Yeah. Um, but then I started realizing that there was like live stuff happening so for a couple of years i was just out watching just content just every second of every day practically yeah and never knew that there was like a group of people getting together regularly you know yeah. um whether that was online or in person and finally when i realized that there was some stuff that happened like every week you know every tuesday at 7 p.m this happens you know uh, I started going and hanging out and I spent a while just kind of just kind of chilling, just kind of like, you know, sitting there Driving. and I didn't really like reach out or anything or talk to anybody. And one reason was because uh, to do that on like YouTube, you actually have to like create a channel. Right. Like you don't have to. It's not really anything ridiculous, but it did actually technically mean that I was going to be like stepping back into that like online social media e-space. Mm -hmm. um, but right around that time, I I was watching a show on Your Friendly Neighborhood Atheist, uh, this awesome dude named Ethan Michael. And um, he ended the show by saying, hey, if you're watching out there and you like what we do, um, just so you know, we actually need somebody to just kind of volunteer and help out a little bit. And so I ended up I ended up finding a way to message him. Uh, that didn't involve me, you know, having to make anything crazy. And when when we spoke, he ended that by saying, hey, man, this is great. I think you'd be awesome. Uh, just send me a message on Facebook because that's how I have to talk to all my people. And I went, oh, I don't have one. But is is it too forward if i 
say I'd go home and make one after work. And he was like, oh, man, dude, I just didn't want to say that because I thought that was creepy on my end because I really would like you to do this. So, yes, do that. Message me. And so when I did that, um, I came up with the name Secular Rarity just because I liked the way it sounded. And I wanted, you know, something in that secular atheist skeptic, something, yeah. some name like that. Uh, and then it's I just got, got a got nice all... ring to it and it's not Thank like you. triggering like yeah. it's not it doesn't it's not divisive in any way. Yeah. And it's and there's so many different, you know, people call me SR. People call me rarity. You know, people you could also call me Elliot. I'm open about that, too. Uh, but call you what? Uh, <laughs> Elliot. <laughs> <I'm just saying. laughs> uh, but so I, I ended up doing that. And in the process of doing that, I decided that what would be beneficial for me at the time, just so that I could speak with people on multiple platforms and people would know I'm the same person, um, was I just went out and created everything else and just just put it all under the same, I have the same little logo on stuff. Yep. It's just a little thought bubble, you know? Yeah. Everything is the same. Um, and so from there, I just, it was an easy method for people to find me. Because yeah. if somebody needed to find me on Discord for whatever reason, because I was helping out there or something, boom, it's that it's that same person. And so with that, it, you know, a couple of years would go by of me helping out over half a dozen channels. There wow. was there was a period of time where I would spend almost every Sunday for at least six hours doing work for various shows. and. There was a period of time where almost every day of the week I was helping out behind the scenes uh, for at least, you know, hour and a half to two hours wow. um, in How conjunction. How old were you at this point that you were uh, doing all this? This was just a few years ago. So wow. literally we're talking, yeah, 25, 26, 27 ish. Um, so and and one reason a lot of that has subsided is because various various places have taken breaks and stuff for various reasons um and i've kind of changed some of the stuff that i do as well um but but yeah that 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 whole time was just was me just helping people out wherever i could as well as really really constantly being in live chats um and yeah. hanging out with people and and i love that and uh, one of the biggest reasons that i i'm just not doing that as much unfortunately lately is i i just have i'm just doing other things too that that keep me from getting to to hang out and have as much but fun also sometimes. you are doing that stuff all yeah the time. i mean like, still literally yeah, all still. like <laughs> i i literally cannot remember the last time i was on a live stream or watching a live stream or in a live stream that you weren't in the, at least in the comments so that's like that's mind-boggling to me that you're like yeah i've really stepped back i'm like did you have multiple computers going in the past like how did that even how did that yeah. even work so what was it that you were initially deconstructing from what yeah. how were you raised so i uh i was a part of the methodist church my family was was methodist um we we moved when i was uh very very young so within like the first five years of my life and stuff. So when we got to Nashville, we we wanted to find a church that was very I mean, they did. I obviously didn't have a say, but they wanted to find a church that was similar to a a pastor that we had back in uh, Virginia. So they, there was a I, there was a person there that was just a really wonderful person. And honestly, we we had even gone back to see this person like years after you know i really wasn't a part of the the faith or anything she's still an absolutely amazing person like, just yeah. because she's oh, a yeah. pastor doesn't mean she's you know um but they found a church here and we stayed there for for quite a while um i was the last person to end up actually staying and and going and doing stuff and most of that was was music based at the time so I was I was really there was a couple of years where I really wasn't believing so much, hadn't really gone to that other side of of thinking about much or, or you know, where where do I sit? What's my label? Yeah. Blah. Um, but yeah, I, I stayed for I stayed to play drums and I stayed to play handbells. So I did that for for quite a while. And honestly, I, I miss the handbells. I mean, drums those I, are, I have. Those but, are dope. I'm going to be real. Yeah, the handbells they are, are dope. cool. 
They yeah. are cool. And I love, I love, I love telling people about that. I love talking about them. I would adore if we could somehow get some secular coalition of, of handbell players and do a bunch of, you know, non-religious handbell songs, because really it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, medium. But uh, yeah, I mean, most, most everybody else at that time had stepped away from actually going to church regularly. Um, but my, my parents were never super religious on anything. Mm -hmm. Um, it was their parents that were for sure more religious, but even in that sense, none of my grandparents ever like beat God into any of us. Like, right. There was no, there was like a sign on the wall that said, you know, God something or Jesus that, but yeah. like nobody was ever hardcore about it. Um, my faith was very much a, a lot of the, Hey, you know, God's got it. He's taking care of it. And the lovey stuff. The yeah. rest of it, like I, I remember, I remember being like 12 years old and somebody coming into one of our Sunday school classes and being trying to talk to us about how they did some carbon dating on trees or some shit. Um, and I remember as a 12 year old, just flat out being like, this is stupid. <laughs> like not only, not only does what you're saying just sound <clears throat> not correct to me, but more yes. importantly, the fact that you as a follower of Christ are truly trying to do this just seems like you're compensating for not actually believing, bro. Yes. Like if yes. you really have faith, what does it matter if we found Noah's Ark, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember the very first time I met a kid in school who uh, was like a young earth creationist. Oh. And I was probably in sixth grade. And we were in science class and I was doing a project on uh, some dinosaur, one of like the oldest mm. dinosaurs. I, I remember what it looked like, but I don't remember what its name was. And he just like crossed his arms and stared at me. And I said, what, like, what's, the, what's your problem? And he was like, well, I just think it's ridiculous that the teacher is letting you do all this wrong stuff. And <laughs> I thought he meant the artwork because I had like yeah. hand drawn everything. I really oh. wanted to be a cartoonist. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, this looks exactly like the dinosaur. And he's like, no, I just think it's like stupid that you actually believe that the world is that old. And I was like, well, what do you believe? And he's like, obviously, the world is only 6,000 years old. And oh, I was just like, I was like, so then how do you explain this dinosaur being like 10 million years old? Mm, mm -hmm, and we just mm -hmm. stared at each other for a second. And he's like, I don't want to talk about it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and that was it. That was like the extent of it. Because <clears throat> like it never occurred to me not to believe science. So yeah, when he's like, yeah. the world is only 6,000 years old, I clearly had a textbook that said this dinosaur was 10 million. And I wasn't trying to be a jerk. I was just like, oh, do, maybe you didn't see the book that we have that says it. It's like, oh, <laughs> it, he's not it, allowed Right to here, read. actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so when you were first kind of like, this doesn't really make a lot of sense. I don't know that I'm a religious person or that I believe God's mm. real. Do you remember what it was that first made you be like, hmm? Or was it kind of a gradual process? Yeah, so it definitely there there is, I think for the vast majority of the people in like the non-religious atheist space, um, it is this when when you when you really look back on the whole, you know, uh, timeline, you'll go, oh, yeah, there was that thing. Yeah, that one thing when I was 17, you know, and yeah. but I, I didn't really recognize that until I was 25, you know, Um so there were definitely some things like that. I mean, I remember there were a couple of times as a child um, where I just spent hours just crying, praying to God. Um, one reason was because when I was born, I uh, came down with a very strange illness, was in the NICU for a little bit. And in that process, we didn't end up getting me baptized. Oh, and, and with the Methodists, the yeah. Methodist tradition, it's very much a newborn baby thing. Yes. And so I was, you know, eight, nine years old and hadn't been baptized and was like, you oh, man, shit. this is this is this is a big deal. Uh, this is a big deal, you know. Um, it so, really is, though. Like, you it know, is. laugh. It, it really is. Yes. Like, yes. I had to constantly sit through Sunday school classes where people would be like, remember your baptism and stuff. Um, 
I remember the first time I ever went to a Catholic church uh, in New York and they walked around and they flicked a little, little water on you. And I, I looked at my mom and I was like, what's that for? And she's like, oh, it's as uh, to remember your baptism. I was like, oh, but I, I don't. Must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so like, why, why didn't they get you baptized like immediately afterward? I don't know. Honestly, I don't, I don't think there was ever a super great answer other than just the simple fact that like after that because i i was in the hospital for for a couple of months um yeah. and it was it was it was pretty bad and when i got out honestly i think what ended up happening like a lot of stuff is just like you know there was this thing that was like oh man we should have done this but it's also not like you know the world's not going to fucking end. You know, the sun's still going to rise but tomorrow. It, yeah. But it but, is in Revelation. I mean, I mean clearly, yeah, yeah, yeah clearly. I get you. Oh, you I, see like... the, I see the disconnect, but just time went by. And then when we moved, we, you know, found the other church and it just wasn't a, you know. And finally, one day I said, I really want to do this. I really want to. And I did. And I, I went through confirmation um, in the Methodist church because they do that as well, similar to the Catholics and stuff. Um, and got involved with the bands and stuff. And then eventually was like, all right, you know, I don't, uh, I don't really hold on to this anymore. And the, the big kind of that, the big push at the end, which is, which is, I think what a lot of us really remember. Yeah. Um, yeah. for me, it was looking up morality. It was, it was literally just finally going into some philosophical understandings of why to be why being a good person matters or or yeah. how to be a good person and realizing mm -hmm. that there were a lot of different ways that you could get to all of the conclusions that i already felt in my head yep right without a god that was that was crucial because i i really did believe for a very very long time just that you know kind of Pabulum presupposition stuff of listen um, to those words. I know I kill it. I words. kill it. It's the only value that I bring. Um, but the, uh, just just that like everything that is good must come from God, right? Mm -hmm. And and so pulling pulling that away and finally being able to be like, oh no, actually there are other ways. Definitely was was that final thing that really pushed me into oh snap like maybe god isn't needed for any of it yeah yeah so. and then there's that idea i think many of us run into where people we love very much and who are some of the greatest people we know don't for qualify sure. and some of the worst people we know who we can stand the least who oh, are the meanest sure. to everybody qualify check all the boxes and so we're yeah. like how is it that's weird. That's yeah. odd. Yeah. yeah. And and so I know that a lot of people, their first thought is, well, if that's God's real idea, then I don't want to serve him anyway. Like maybe he is real, but he sounds like an ass. And then other yeah. people are like, there's no way that this person they describe in the Bible would also do that. And I'm like, actually, that is. if you read yeah. further, it is. It really is. Um, And so do they are they aware of your secular rarity persona? <laughs> Or like, oh, how sure. do they feel about all that? Are you kind of out in terms of, are, oh, do yeah, you yeah, consider yeah. yourself atheist, agnostic? Uh -huh. Yeah, I yeah. use both. I use, so, the, the, okay, just, just a quick tangent. Now I'll, I'll get back to that question, I swear. I, I use a lot of different labels. And one of the reasons that I use a lot of different labels is because just kind of depending on what space I'm in, depending yep. on who the people are that I'm talking with. Yep. I'm a big fan of, you know, hey, what label do you use? How are you yep. using the term atheist? I I truly believe that the the argument, especially among non-believers, um, what exactly atheist agnostic means, like I think that is such a waste of our time. I yeah, truly yeah. do. I, I just do. I don't care. I don't care. I'm basically just willing to grant whatever anybody wants. Right. Right. Like um, I thought we had agreed that yeah. anyone can go by any pronoun they want these days and it should not matter any I, label anything like why right. does it matter <laughs> yeah why are we why are we harping so much on this y'all yeah. um i do like the terms agnostic and theological yes. non cognitivist yes. i think both of those are really cool because the concepts yes. that they're describing are 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 really fascinating um i think again 
I just think at the end of the day, it's easier if we just say like, hey, here's a word. And then like, hey, I'm not sure how you're using that. OK, cool. But yeah, atheist, I often say I often yeah. say agnostic, free thinker, secular, secular humanist. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so my my family is fully aware. Um, they know they don't watch, but that's just because they don't care. That's because uh, the family. Family's not supposed to watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't they're not interested. Like I know there's been times in the past where um I've I've you know gone to visit, you know, my mom and um and they've been divorced for like my whole life, by the way, too. So oh, uh yeah, yeah, yeah. So so um but I'll go visit my mom and and I'll say like, oh, yeah, you know, this is new. So I just did this or that or whatever. And she'll be like, oh, yeah, send me the link, you know, um, and just no response to that. So not not obviously not saying anything bad. I love you, mom. Um, just in case this is the one that you the find. One, like, I always am like, this is going to be the one that the one where I joke around is going to be the one. Yeah. Right. But yeah, no, they they uh, they're very supportive. They they That's awesome. They know that I have always been somebody that enjoys being kind of in this debatey space of some kind. Yeah. Um, they know I've always been somebody that, you know, really tries to advocate for people who who don't have a place or a platform. Yeah. Um, and so just hearing that I'm able to do stuff like that, they're they're happy with and they're just yeah. like, cool, at least he's not, you know, homeless on the street. Like that's that's about the extent, I think. <laughs> He's not doing drugs and he's not homeless on the street. And you're like, excuse well, me, I'm just not homeless on the street. Yeah, I am yeah. literally just not homeless. Um, do you have siblings? I do. Yeah, and I have, have one they, older brother. Is he similar or is he uh -huh. still religious? What are his thoughts? Yeah, and he's he's very similar. Um, he he eventually, I think after like a year or two after I had really like started taken atheist as a label and like like delving into that um we hadn't seen each other for a while at the time and we got back together we're drinking having a conversation it was like oh snap man you don't believe in god hell yeah man you know, catholic <laughs> yeah. church catholic church sucks like right on man so yeah. but yeah like we he he's not um as far as i know he's he's not really someone who like enjoys um engaging in this too much like it'll have the conversations of course yeah um, but yeah definitely very very similar to a lot of my stances on stuff with like no probably not for most of it uh you know ghosts no probably not aliens coming in you know talking to people what? and stuff like probably not Listen. Aliens are very real. I need to understand. <laughs> Man, I actually it's it I I actually did read an article this morning about this this like senior analyst who like just recently has has made a big stink and stuff and it's frustrating. It frustrates the crap out of me. Like I'm not saying anything bad about that person. That guy is probably a super awesome dude, but like even in the fucking article it says the reason he is so confident that we have this extraterrestrial technology is because he heard it from some other people. And it's like, it's like, oh my gosh, I get that what you're saying is the people that he interviewed are like higher level. I, I totally understand that. But like, you also have to recognize the labyrinthine, you know, amount of. Uh, I know I'm just at this point, I'm just really I'm I'm, I'm scraping the bottom. I'm trying. Time. I'm genuinely trying to get good ones now. Uh, but just like th this, this insane amount of, you know, clearance and like what people are allowed to know and like, oh, my gosh, like you genuinely think that there are just it's 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 frustrating. It, it, yes. Anyway, it's yes. just frustrating. Yes. Aliens and are probably not probing us people like chill no. out. <laughs> Aliens are not probing us. I think there is I, I do think it is selfish to think there's not life anywhere else. Oh, absolutely. In the universe, oh, absolutely. That life is like amoebas. Probably. Yeah. Like I don't Probably. think I do not think there is intelligent life yeah. out out anywhere else. Yeah. Unless eons away, there's a planet that is the same Super exact duper. distance mm -hmm. from its own sun. You know, like mm -hmm. if there's a carbon copy of Earth because yeah. the temperature worked out. But yeah. like Whenever they're like, oh, we found life on Mars, I'm sure that it can go in a petri dish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, and that, that, that's still cool. Don't get me wrong. Like, and that's cool. It, yeah, yeah. But, but it's not like 
I don't Star think, Wars. Well, we, right, Star I Wars and Star Trek probably aren't in our future. Exactly. Right? I yeah. don't need Mel Gibson to come board up my house and move by a lake and like <laughs> teach me the importance of keeping glasses of stagnant water all over my house. Like it's fine. You know, well, first of all, I don't want Mel Gibson in my house at all. But, right, right, right. Like, that's know. that's a non starter right there. Right. That's in, like for like back before we knew he was an anti-Semite. I don't yeah, need yeah. Mel Gibson. Yeah, by the way, spoiler alert for anybody that hasn't seen signs at this point in your existence. Uh water. Water hor- water uh it fixes the whole problem because it, it uh, does it hurts the aliens. A species that was capable of traveling through the the medium of space, that whole vacuum and stuff, apparently didn't look at the earth. When they, they went to wet. it, <laughs> just <laughs> didn't just didn't look at the fact that it is mostly water. Like that was a huge problem that they just overlooked somehow. Like I don't know, I don't know what to tell you how that worked. Still not a bad movie. I like. Uh, or maybe they just thought like maybe they were just really careful with their aim when they were landing. They're just real careful. And, like look, you don't touch the lava. You know, okay, all of this is all of this is poison. <laughs> yeah. It's like that that moment in the Lion King where he's like, "Where the light touches is our kingdom. You must never go there." Yeah. yeah, like that's what they did, but with water, they were like, "That shit toxic. Uh, Everything else, yeah, gold mine." Yeah. Literally, Seems and figuratively. Totally, totally logical in my opinion. I don't see why. I don't see why we wouldn't do that. You know, that's weird. That's how I see it. I don't know. Um. So, where do you see yourself in the next few years? Do you see yourself ever? Um, like putting anything of yours on your YouTube channel? Do you think you'll you'll always enjoy more collaborating with other creators and, and brands and things like that? Or are you kind of open to whatever happens? Yeah. Um, so definitely it, the the last one is is probably the best description. Um I I am in the process of creating some uh Patreon only stuff. And one of the reasons that I'm looking into doing it in that format, as opposed to just putting it out on YouTube or uh, Twitter and stuff, um, because honestly, I I do a lot already and I love doing that. I love doing it. And I, I really would love to be able to use the, the Patreon stuff as a vehicle into doing more of this and giving yeah. more of my time to people. Yeah. Uh, so that, that is my, that is kind of where I'm going in the next uh, handful of months. Will any of that ever get on YouTube and the other things? Like probably um, I I've had, I think probably almost every single, you know, place that I've been, They've been like, oh, man, you know, you could like mirror this video on your channel or you could like, you know, just just get the get get the file from me and upload it and stuff. And I think it's partly just like I just don't ever follow up. I don't or know. Or even easier, just put a playlist on your channel like. a Yeah. Just save it to a playlist on your channel. You don't have to upload anything. You don't have to mirror anything. That's actually but, that's actually really smart. Yeah. I, honestly, when I work. went to your channel, I thought I was going to see like a playlist of everything <laughs> you're involved in, and I didn't. I was I was like impressed. I was like, wow. It take it take a while at this point. I to, know. to try and uh like like catalog it all, but I'm sure I could. I mean, it'd probably be worthwhile. Um, but yeah, I I have been I have just been so so humbled and thrilled at all of the places that I've, I've ever gotten to be, you know, you and, gotta be some cool places. I know, I know. And meet some, some truly amazing people. The first time that I ever hosted the atheist experience was with Dave Warnock. That's I mean, wild. he's yeah. Just one of the just absolute best freaking people out there. And yeah, that like something like that is so amazing to me. It's, it's hard to, it, it's it's hard to completely wrap my head around it in a way where it's like, oh man, you know, some of this, some of this shit you could actually like, you know, pay your rent with. Um, so I, I do need to be a little better at that. That is definitely true. Um, but I, I just, it's so, it's still so hard for me because I am such a fan of so much out there and I just value you know, so many different people and so many different styles and, you know, spaces. And 
it, it, I, I just, I don't ever want to lose that. Right. And I, 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 I guess maybe in part, I'm a little worried that there will be this time where I'm just so disconnected from, you know, what is the, the grassroots? What is the, you know, not to say there's anything wrong with having a channel that, that has, you know, 40 subscribers. I think that, that might still be more than I have, you know, so, so like no, no shame or anything. It's just to say that I, I find so much value in being able to, you know, be a part of a space that has 500, you know, subscribers and let's say like 10 views and to, <clears throat> to be able to grow that into, yeah. you know, 5,000 and, and 500, like that's yeah. so amazing to me. And so, yeah, I can. Man, the whole value, the time things, a little personal issue I got to work on, but yeah. we're getting there. We we yeah. have actually made some concrete steps. Um, there will actually be some content out there that, you know, in the next couple of months that is 100% like just SR. Um, I have no idea what the quality will be. Like, it's, <laughs> like, it's no highly, promises. Yeah, highly possible. It will just be like this right here. And that's yeah. it, you know, yeah. but uh, we'll see. I mean, people, yeah. people get paid for sleeping on Twitch. So it's like, why didn't I do that? Right. You know? Right. That right. And with this sleep. content, especially because, you know, I, I've been doing stand up. I've done like storytelling, stuff like that. That's yeah. all stuff that at one time I was like, yeah, I would love to monetize this. Um, but I, I feel like with this content specifically, um, I don't know uh, how you feel, but mm-hmm. in my opinion, accessibility is everything. Yeah. Accessibility is everything. And yeah. if if everything were to go behind a paywall, mm-hmm. there would be so many people out there who would not be exposed to these ideas and to this information yeah. simply because they can't afford it. And I feel like people not being able to afford information is already a rampant problem especially in America right now, just the fact that you don't make a certain amount of money can keep you from knowing so much stuff about your world, about your country, that I would personally just be crushed if I got some deal with, you know, like Wondery app on Spotify Mm -hmm. or whatever, like $4.99 a month and lost so many people who might need this information and might yeah. need to hear this from somebody just because they didn't have an extra five bucks to throw mm-hmm. at the Wondery app, you know? So it's like, it's a conflict, but I can also totally see um, something like Patreon being big for you because I know you mentioned you only have like a few followers, but I know for a fact you have like thousands of followers. Like I've seen <laughs> them in the chat, like I've literally seen them. And so I feel like what I like about that is that people who can contribute, I feel like, especially in this space, they're very good at it. They're very good at contributing. So even if your YouTube video or your stream is free, people will super chat. People will subscribe to Patreon. They'll Mm -hmm. find a way. The ones who can will find a way to to support your content and help you meet that goal. I feel like that's, especially for somebody like you, I feel like that's absolutely in your future without having to charge for everything yeah thank you because yeah i i definitely i definitely am in the same boat there i mean i'm in that that exact same headspace because i i know how important it was for me to have access to so much of this stuff for free um that doesn't mean that i don't you know watch a a a quick youtube ad or something like fine that that's that's just standard I, i expect that um but yeah i i don't ever want to be I don't ever want to be doing things in this space where, you know, the majority of what I'm doing is inaccessible due to finances. Yes. Um, absolutely. Hey, look, we we live in the capitalist system we live, y'all. And unfortunately or fortunately, however you feel, you got to make money because the grocery store doesn't accept love. They just don't. Nope. I've tried. I've tried hugs. I've tried love. I stole somebody's cat once. They didn't like any of that. So, you know, none of that works. Um, And, you know, with with all of that is is just to say, I think me doing me doing videos in that format that are like, hey, SR, why don't why don't you have your own stuff? It's like, oh, um, I, I do, actually. It's like, oh, well, why is it all behind a paywall? Like, Well, because, you know, 70 percent of what I do in this space is purposefully designed to be free 
-hmm. Like I want it. I want to be volunteering my time for these communities so mm -hmm. that they can grow and make money off of it. That's yeah. what I want. I want these other places that have stuff from me when they go, hey, man, we love the way you said that. Could you just could you come on tomorrow and just say it real quick again for five minutes? We'll clip it and put it on whatever. Yes. Yes. I want to be able to do that. And I want to have I want to have the majority of my stuff like that. So if that spurs some people to go, man, I would like to hear this guy talk more. Right. Um, yeah, please. Then then come pay some money. Watch it. Uh, it. It. I don't know. I, there's a good couple of places, podcasts and, you know, um, Patreon stuff that I, I uh, use or have subscribed to in the past. And they say, you know, if you, if you seriously are incapable of, um, you know, affording this, hit me up personally. I'll send you a private link. You know, highly possible. I'll start that in, yeah. you know, before too long. Um, because again, it's, it, it's very much open for me where I go, what I do. Uh, there's, there's stuff both. I, I don't want to say too much, but I know there's, there's stuff in person that I do as well as online. And mm -hmm. I'd love to be able to grow all of that. Like yeah. I would, I would just truly adore if I was able to, you know, sustain myself in a way that gives me more opportunities to, to volunteer and help. So yeah, yeah. I, I we'll see where it goes. Honestly, yeah. we could be a year from now and be like, all right, that one, one patron supporter. I, I appreciate the hell out of you, man. But, uh, you know, we'll see. Yeah. And what do you think, in your opinion, mm -hmm. what is the most important message that you try to get across to people by being mm -hmm. involved in secular spaces? Like, is there a particular message or or thought or concern that you have in terms of religion or or faith in god that you're like i really have to be a part of the other side or is it more just a passion for humanism and secularity yeah a little a little of both um it's it's a handful of different things for sure i mean one of the things i i really do try to um i really do try to exemplify as much as possible is a cordial discussion, mm -hmm. you know, on difficult topics. I I don't believe that that is the style that everybody should take. I right. don't think so. And Works and for I some people right not for everybody. And I I'm very happy that there are other people out there that take a different approach than I do because we need that. Our side is right. still so small. Um. So I I like to show that. I like to I like to show the the beauty and you know the the truly fascinating stuff of a world that doesn't have all this magic like only by stepping away from the belief in the supernatural do you really get to the cool stuff in life um so like i i love to be able to show examples of that to people i love to be able to i love to try and work across whatever divides we have in in our communities right because that that's just going to happen with any space, no matter what it is, there's going to be eventually two atheists that just don't fucking like each other. And you know what? Fine. That's fine. <laughs> and y'all don't have to work with each other and right. y'all don't have to talk about each. Other. I don't care, but I want to support you both because I think both of you do valuable things. Um, and as long as nobody's doing something egregious, you know, I think right. we all know the list of things, uh, <laughs> then it's like, okay, like these are my people and we, we still have such a difficult fight. We need to work together. Um, and I guess another one too, is I, I really, especially lately, just mainly because of the Christian nationalist, you know, fervor right now going on in the U S, um, I really do also like to express the ability for an atheist and a theist to work together on so many vital issues that that are affecting us right now. Yes. Like you you can believe in whatever damn supernaturally ghosty whatever crystal I don't care if you stand up in public and say, "Hey man, what you're doing is messed up. You shouldn't treat trans people like that. You're on my team. Yep. I don't care. We can put yeah. all the other stuff aside. Look, I think Scientology is fucked. 
is just a <laughs> gross, gross ass cult. Okay. Yes. Guess what though? If you're a Scientologist and you're not a fan of just like, I don't know, banning kids from getting health care. Hey, guess what? Cool. You and me, we're on the same time. Like, let's work together. We're going to stand at the, yeah. the, the protest, you know? So yeah. I, I think all of that is, is so deeply important. Um, and we have gotten a bad rap in some, you know, in some instances on the, the atheist space, the definitely like the online debate space for sure. Like, you know, and, and I, I just like to, I just like to try and say, Hey, look, there is value here, guys. And we also, we, can find it. we don't get a bad rap for losing. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That is true. So I'm saying yeah, we don't yeah. get it. We don't have a we don't have a reputation for losing those debates. That's but that's be it what that's well, yeah. And I, and I, I think so I started the whole, you know, the whole YouTube binge. I think we all go through in, in yeah. this era around 2014, 2015, probably. Mm -hmm. So I remember when that was pretty much the majority of what was out there was just like yeah. so and so destroys so and so like so yeah. this and that and like whoa um and and that was intense but I feel like it was a little bit necessary mm -hmm. because I don't know about your experience but I feel like a lot of people who leave Christianity specifically like American Southern Christianity mm -hmm. they're very angry about it. They like they they first discover they don't think it's true. Then they discover they've been lied to for years and shamed. And then they get upset and then they get mad. And so mm -hmm. part of me is like, I understand why that stuff is out there. Oh, yeah. But I very much like you mentioned, I want to be the voice that isn't that mm -hmm. um, one because there's enough of it out there, too. I am tired. I'm tired. I'm a very tired person. Like I keep elf concealer in business. I am exhausted. I am old as fuck. Um, and also because like when they used to pay you $1,500 a semester to argue with people, like you're not going to do it for free. You're just not. You're just not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like Maybe. people think. 50 bucks. What? 50 bucks, bitch. I'll debate you right now on do anything. It. Right bucks. now. Right now. <laughs> do it right now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This will be the monetization that you finally get. This will be people will tune in and they'll super chat to like, like gladiator style. Um, you heard, you heard it, folks. Sydney is saying if you send her money. She will debate you on anything, okay? 50 bucks, and she has to take the side as to why pineapple is correct on pizza. Do it. You Dude, I love pineapple on pizza. Oh, damn. I thought, I thought that might have been I love pineapple on pizza. Oh, okay. Come for right, me, right. bitch. Come <laughs> at me. <laughs> like, more for me. Um, but, yeah, and, and so people always think, they're like, oh, I bet you love to argue with people. And I'm like, no, I'm tired. I'm very tired. I just want to hang out with my birds and my dog and talk to people online and then post it. <laughs> like, right, right. So so there, I see that there is value for that content. And I know that I consumed that content at one point, you know, but I also want I, I want us to have walked through argumentation and debate atheism so that other people can run through it and get to yeah. the other side and see that yeah. there's a little bit for everyone. You don't have to be intense and angry to be questioning your yes. beliefs. You can sit down and you can talk to anybody about it. And, and, you know, there's some people that might be like, well, if you're not showing them who's boss, you're not making an impact. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. And, and we, we have such a, we have such a normalized space where it's okay if you create a, a, a 10 year empire that is entirely focused on gardening. And it just so happens that every single episode you read a Bible verse, like nobody bats an eye at that. Nobody, N nobody cares when it's a it's a it's a mechanic and he's on TikTok and he's got the the five million people's whatever and that you know no one cares when he just casually is like yeah so here's my bible blah 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 so like we need on the atheist side we need on the non-religious side those people that are like all right guys so welcome back to bowling is us we're just bowling all we're doing is bowling by the way pretty sure uh 
pretty sure God's not real. All right, <laughs> let's go, go hit that strike. Come on. Like we need that. And, and we, that does require us to get through that space. Exactly. Like you said, you, you right. have to be comfortable enough at least where, you know, when somebody just shows up in the side chat randomly and says like, God bless you or something that you don't just like lose your shit. Yeah. Like you need to be able to just be calm enough when somebody says, you know, the atheists are just destroying this country. And you go, oh, OK. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm still going to go into this McDonald's if that's cool or not. Do you want me to hold the door open for you still or, or are you yep. good? You're going to stay out here like and again, I get why I get why people are angry and I, I don't fault mm -hmm. people for that. And I don't fault people for for engaging in those spaces because there are people on the other side of this discussion. That is the only way that they engage purposefully. They purposefully engage in a combative, argumentative yep. style. And yep. we need those people on our side. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm not a big fan of of trying to tell people like, hey, you have to do it this way or that way. Yeah. Uh, but I, I have my style and my yeah. style is going to be, you know, one where I giggle a lot, one where, you know, I'll I'll point out hard fucking things. Believe. Oh, me. yeah. But at oh, the yeah. same time, like I kind of want to try to do it in a way where it it softens it so that it doesn't seem so like, you know, ah, got you in the heart right. there and more like a. Hey, here's a gentle poke in a direction, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, um, I love pointing out contradictions mm -hmm. with like a humor. It's like, oh, really? Like, oh, uh -huh. you don't say. Uh -huh. Like, uh, I was talking to Rebecca once and and I love her. I love Rebecca yeah. Yeah, at yeah, Bread yeah. of Life. And she said she was talking about the changes she went through in her youth. And she's like, it was it was a real it was a real process. And I was like, perhaps it was an evolution. <laughs> And she was like, ha ha, you know, just joking around That's or like great. goofing around That's with great. people. Um, and I feel like that when you can speak to people in that manner, mm -hmm. in a respectful way that you're still mm -hmm. like, I, I have never pretended to agree with anyone I disagreed with, right. but one, make an effort to understand where mm -hmm. they're coming from. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. Two, when people feel like they're being heard, they're a lot more likely to be honest. So mm -hmm. I feel like I've gotten people to say things that they normally would never say in a religious debate or in a church because they feel comfortable and they feel like they can actually express who they are versus who they're supposed to be based on the church yeah. they go to. Um, and when I say that, I don't even mean like gotchas or got them to admit so Just I, I can tell that they are a lot more open-minded and flexible yeah. then they're kind of allowed to be in other yeah. spaces and i think that's important too because as much as i think people listen to things like my podcast because they are also atheists what about that person listening who's listening to hate listen and then somebody whose youtube channel they really like is actually pretty flexible and they're like i can be flexible too like i don't have to be yeah. militant about this yeah and so to me, it's just important that people see as diverse as we have people in this country, there are also just as diverse people in spaces, whether they're religious, non-religious, humanist, agnostic, atheist. We human beings come in so many forms. Yes. And so our content can't just come in one form because we're going to chase away people who may really need to hear certain things that wouldn't because they just don't want to sit through a debate. A hundred percent. And again, we're we're not in we're not in a position where, you know, we really can just be arbitrarily cutting off appendages like we've got to we've got to maintain as much of this community as we can. Again, yeah. look, I'll 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 say this and it might be controversial, but you don't have to accept Nazis, guys. I mean, that's fine. I think we all <laughs> recognize that that's a super easy line to call out. It's like, yeah. hey, but this guy's a free thinker. Should we still? It's like, no, no, no. Like, no. It's, that's not hard. But like yeah. other than stuff like that, guys, like it's it's good. You know, it's good that we we have this broad coalition. Yeah. Um. And and one thing that, that you said, you know, uh, just a second ago, I, I really liked and and it's exactly the way I think about it of this being being cordial being compassionate being able to have those uh, 
complicated, nuanced, challenging discussions, it's a skill. It's a muscle that has to be worked. And one of the ways that that happens for people is not necessarily like me picking up weights for the first time, right? right. Like sometimes it's just I see somebody do an exercise and then I go, oh, snap, you know what? That's actually not a hard exercise. Like I could do that while I'm, you know, on one of these shows. That's an easy little leg lift thing or whatever, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. okay, cool. Well, that doesn't mean that I go do that damn exercise the next day. It doesn't mean that I'm lifting 500 pound dumbbells the week after, but it does have that track now in my head of me thinking about that. Yeah. And so yeah. then a week goes by, I see the same infomercial. I go, well, I'm not going to buy P90X. It kind of sounds expensive. I don't know if I have the, you know, the real drive to do that. But what, hey, what was that? What was that one exercise again? you know what? That's not bad. And the next yeah. thing you know, you're thinking about it more. Next thing you know, you're doing five a day. Next thing you know, you're winning the world's strongest man competition. Yes. <laughs> Just it's like, wait, who am I? Who am I? <laughs> that's that's my real dream, you guys. This is just an avenue to get me to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger in his heyday. That's really well, and not only that, but just like with exercise, just like with weight loss and quitting smoking or anything, it has to be the person's idea. Mm -hmm. So, like, you gotta want when it. when I first started deconstructing. Um, I was still a Baptist Christian Southern girl, and I started dating this guy who was one of those militant, argumentative atheists. And I remember that he wanted to argue about it all the time. Like, I felt like I could not just sit down and eat food at the table. I had to be on guard constantly. And I truly believe that I was a Christian for longer because of that behavior, mm. where sure. he thought, I'm going to force her to see the truth. I'm going to force her to recognize every day that her like yeah. thoughts and opinions are. Instead, I just shut down. I just stopped listening. And I just like retreated inside my beliefs. Whereas I was like on my way out and having a discussion about it and asking me just the pointed questions could have actually been very helpful. Yeah. And it might've been nice to feel like I had an ally. Instead, it was like, it's like the prairie dog comes out and they're like, boo. And then the prairie dog hides and they're like, where to go? Why doesn't he like spend <laughs> yeah, time with yeah. us? You know? And yeah. so that's another reason why I think there's nothing wrong with the the calm, conversational, mm -hmm. polite approach, you know, because not everybody's quite ready yet. And like you said, it's it's baby steps. It's like the first step is literally just subscribing to a channel or downloading a podcast that has anything to do with it. A lot of people, yeah. they can't even have this stuff on their playlists, like the mm -hmm. the word atheist and things like that. They're inviting um, demons into their life, Sydney. Like literally. You can't have a Ouija board in your house. Like no. that's how Satan gets in. Yeah. But you can have Alexa. That's literally so, how Satan gets in. Have you seen I know. Yeah, I, I, yeah. A few years ago, I remember somebody was like, hey, man, I've got this extra like Alexa thing and you could have it. And I was like, no, I really don't want it. And he's like, no, it's it's like brand new. Like I just got it for like free or whatever. And I was just like, no, I genuinely don't want it. Like I, I do have I struggle with I struggle with the amount of cameras and microphones in my house currently. And we're yeah. only talking like two. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I uh, I don't like a smart home stuff, and mm. I'm not a fan of AI. Everybody's a fan of AI yeah. right now. I it scares the shit out of me. I, I don't like that. it. I yeah. would just like to say for um, you know, five, you know, however long in the future, uh, when the AI overlords have taken over and are rewatching this to see who the good ones are, um, I would just say that Sydney's comments do not necessarily <laughs> represent all of those on screen at the moment. I would just like to say, praise our AI overlords. Please do not kill me. <laughs> praise, praise me. Yeah, you see me get like raptured out of my speech. <laughs> no, it is though. It is terrifying. Like I, I really don't think we are prepared for what is happening around us. Yeah, you know, technologically. everyone's just like dumping their personal uh -huh. information into it. They're like, look, mm -hmm. it's going to make a poem. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you just gave it your address and your social security number and your face, six versions of images of you. Like, what are you? Yeah. Everybody's like, yes, deep fakes are real. And then other people are like, look at how it made me a dinosaur. Like, that's great. I'm like, 
all it takes is somebody with a giant checkbook to just buy all of this and then we're screwed I, <laughs> like, know. I know and it's it's yeah we're we're gonna we're gonna potentially get into a space from now which i i you know it could be fun it could also be so long in the future that it doesn't affect me at all, which is great. But like, there will be some some things in history that are recorded down as being true, that are just straight up AI fabrications. Like, it just will happen because it's too good, and there won't be anybody to like refute it. And there, and it'll be everywhere. It'll be like, well, everybody posted this on their Facebook, you know, from this day to this day. Like, it must be real. Like, no, no, it was just some dickhead. Just too drunk one night, created something and put it yep. out there. So, yep. Yeah, I can't wait for for archaeologists to find like fanfic and to be like, this shit was wild back then. Like, what the fuck? What? They used to have wizards going around fucking each other on their broomsticks. Like, what an incredible life it must That's have been. Crazy. In That's just I would never have guessed such a thing. Would never have guessed. By the way, uh, I'm so sorry. I've probably just like you're gonna get. I don't know. Are you are you monet you're monetized, right? Not on YouTube. Oh, okay, no. okay. Then yeah. good. Then all the all the dirty words no. that I've said aren't aren't. Gonna no, be oh no, that's totally fine. Yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure I've said fuck like yeah. twice now, three times. No, yeah, I um I don't have monetization on YouTube. I have light monetization on my podcast host platform, mm -hmm. and then anything I get on Patreon, I also donate as well. Um, so listen Which again. Just a reminder, folks: for fifty bucks. Sydney will passionately debate pineapple on pizza. I know there are many it. of you atheists out there that have strong opinions. And if you want to express them, yeah, uh, that's a good way to do it. I so. agree. I agree. And you know what? If you're a Christian and you want to debate me about pineapple on pizza. That's right. That's do right. Do yeah. Do yeah. Don't call it. Don't don't call me about the God shit anymore. I want to know why you prefer this. There actually is. I will. I will look for this after when I get off. There's this really in-depth article I read once about like why pineapple on pizza has such like a, a thing. And it really has to do with there's there's chemicals. There are chemicals that are in pineapple that only get expressed when you heat it to a certain temperature. Like there's this there's this fascinating discussion on why. <laughs> Pineapple on pizza really fucks with some people, and for other people, they love it. It's really fun. I, th is this is what I'm talking about. Is it kind of like how some people eat cilantro and taste soap, and other people eat cilantro and taste it's cilantro? It's very yes. It's very it's very much in that in that vein, and it's like I love that stuff. That stuff that's is cool. so freaking interesting. You know, that's cool. like yeah, no magic involved. You don't got to pray for anything. Like nothing it's it's wow. just straight up it's the real world folks the real world is way more fascinating than any fairy tale you have ever come across in your life i promise like, that that is 100 percent true actually mm -hmm. i i will stand by that for there, sure there there are like seven species of shark that bioluminesce really? seven species of shark that can create their own light from inside their body people that's incredible. Wow. That's incredible. There's no ancient book written about that, praise Jesus. No, nah. no. Nah. These sharks exist now and they glow in the dark on their own choosing like a firefly. And nobody That's... can see them. They're just out there doing it. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that incredible? That's, That's the world you live in. That's the real world that you live in, folks. You don't need any of this. Look, some of the stuff, believe me, ancient Hindu texts, oh my gosh, the stories are incredible. They are right. wild, okay? Also, I would just like to let you know, because this is one of my, people have probably heard me say this, this is one of my favorite things to say. There is a sea slug out there that is known as a leaf sheep. And it sits on a very particular plant in the Pacific Ocean off of the Japanese archipelago. And okay. it eats this plant. And in the process of eating that plant to stay alive, it steals some of the chloroplast from the plant cells and maintains it in its body and then can go through photosynthesis. We have a term for this. Kleptoplasty. Oh, it's an, it's a word. Kleptoplasty? 
because it steals the chloroplast. Why does that also, though, sound like an episode of the Kardashians as well? Oh, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could no see plastic. it. I could, I could totally see it. I could totally see it. Like, they're going to, like, oh, we got to get our lips done today. Like, oh, And we're not going to pay. And we're not gonna pay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> we're going to run away without paying. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think of something off the fly of, like, Dine and Dash, but, like, you know, like oh man I he's kinda, like how do you ooh. like your nose and she's like oh my god it looks green and then she just runs away <laughs> <laughs> um do you know oh. about the mantis shrimp oh uh i i've heard some fun things like they um, can punch with the force of a bullet and they can break bulletproof glass yes and, yes and they have it, like, like 60 color receptors when we only have like oh, something like a dozen yeah oh, that's they, cool they can like see colors that like we don't even know exist that's and see again like that that's incredible people there's yeah. all of this other stuff going on around us the, the the visible light is so tiny when it comes to the full electromagnetic spectrum and the the fact that there are other creatures out there that can engage with that they're just vibing like, with it every day it's like, so oh, yeah. cool some some birds right the way that they know where to go is because they literally have tiny uh, magnetic pieces in their beak just like naturally yep. and it like it literally syncs up with the earth's magnetic field that's incredible you guys yep. like i mean flat screen tvs are awesome don't get me wrong like i do love them okay like it the the stadiums we build are marvels but like but uh, mantis are, are shrimp you... can punch a hole in a boat yeah, I mean, yeah, that, right. Like, are you serious? Do you really feel like we're on the same level sometimes as these <laughs> like other you, things? You can't keep them in captivity because they are so powerful. They will punch their way out. They will literally punch. That's, That's incredible. Wild. That's, That's incredible. Like video game shit. Right. Uh, koalas, koalas eat entirely a diet of eucalyptus. A plant that has in droves a very particular chemical that for most animals on this earth will outright kill you. Koalas have a very specific microbe in their gut that pulls all that poison out. That's insane. That's yep. incredible. That also, is so they cool. Have rampant chlamydia too. Oh, yeah. It is a really, really big problem. Real big. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> Which I'm and wondering just... if the two are linked. I'm like, mm. Can people with chlamydia like eat eucalyptus all day long? And we just like didn't know that. Like, can they just go please, ahead and do it? Please, like, all to all the viewers out there, please don't purposefully go try no, and get chlamydia. Please don't. Eat and please don't yeah. eat eucalyptus. Either. Yeah, don't do that either. I don't know. I don't think it's good for humans. Either. No, no, it, it is. It is definitely poisonous. You will. Yeah, don't eat it. Yeah, don't yeah, you it. will die. So. Even if you have chlamydia, right. don't eat it. <laughs> don't do it, please. <laughs> We, we just there's there's somebody out there probably one person that is out there that has gotten this far in the video and is just like this is exactly what i wanted today <laughs> this, like, is the this, whole, came for. this whole thing was just perfect you wrapped it up like beautifully like thank you guys thank you yeah, i've got one listener in australia who was like so close to putting a eucalyptus leaf in his mouth and then he's like oh shit <laughs> better not do that i'll die <laughs> Um, oh, gosh. if you, if you had one message mm -hmm. that you wanted to send to anybody listening to this, whether they consider themselves atheists, whether they're deconstructing, whether they're not sure, what would you tell somebody who's listening to this, trying to figure out what they want to do next? Yeah. Um, engage, just keep doing stuff. You know, it doesn't mean that you have to change your mind right away or yeah, ever right, right? Yeah. it doesn't mean that you have to start your own channel or or you know learn video editing you don't have to do anything um i think one of the one of my favorite things to do when having a conversation with somebody that disagrees uh, especially on like the call-in shows and stuff that i do is when i can offer something to somebody that they've never heard of before you know, and we disagree on, on, on something very specific. And I, I say, Hey, have you ever heard of this concept before? And they go, no. And they have that hesitation because a lot of times in those moments, people are bringing that new thing as to like slam the book on and be like, ha ha, there's no way your thing's real with this. But what I love to do is just be like, Hey, just go look into that because maybe it won't make you think differently. Right. Maybe your conclusion isn't different, 
but mm-hmm. maybe it just helps you codify your own thoughts better. Yes. And now you are just, your position is just that much stronger. Yes. I would rather people constantly engage with this stuff and yes. and and just still be whatever the hell they are because I, I really do believe that that is the method that will get us to the best conclusions. Yes. And so yes. if the more that we see that, the more that people are doing this on a regular basis and flexing that muscle, just the better conclusions we will all get. Because if there is a freaking reason to believe that a God exists, you better believe I want it. Yeah. I just don't think there is one. No. So we haven't seen what you need. Yeah. Right. So sharpen your arguments, learn as much as you can, you know, listen to the other side, say, hey, that doesn't seem to fit. Oh, OK, now I understand. Get get your position as solidified as you possibly can. Yes. And then let's go grab a beer and talk about it. Like, that's yeah. what I, I want to do. So, yes, yes. I think I truly believe the only thing more important than knowing what you believe is knowing why you believe it. Yeah. Why is so important. If you listen yep. to this and you are still evangelical, fundamentalist, Bible thumping, but at least now you know why based on the arguments you've heard or the discussion you've heard, yep. even better. Um, yep. And I just think there are so many people out there, including myself for a very long time, who had no idea that I didn't actually believe what I was regurgitating constantly. I had just been told by enough people that that's what I believed, that I believed that. And then thanks to debate and to to, uh, patient people who were willing to have conversations with me, I learned that like, oh, I don't actually, now that I'm learning what that truly means and and Mm -hmm. how that actually exists and and the definitions that go into whatever it is that I claim I am, I'm not actually any of those things. Weird. Like I didn't know that I was representing so many things that I didn't agree with. Um, So yeah, I think, I think you're absolutely right. I think that's huge. It's just engaging, not being afraid of looking up the opposite of what you believe yeah. because one, you might discover, wow, you actually believe a lot different, but two, even if you don't, um, there's no excuse to be ignorant in your yeah. beliefs. There's no excuse for to sure. tout something for the rest of your life and not bother to be interested enough to look into it. Um, especially as we move into an era where so many laws are based on people's religious beliefs. If you are going to follow that religion and expect that rule to govern everybody, I need you to understand why it is you believe that I need, I need you to do your research. Yeah, Um, for sure. Like it, it, it is, it is probably more frustrating as weird as it may sound. It is probably more frustrating when not just when somebody is is you know uh, dehumanizing somebody for for a particular belief but when they don't even have good justification for themselves yes. for that belief yes it does it 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 does it it gets me angry for sure yes. because it's it the harm that you are causing and the reason that you're causing this harm is just ooh, like yep. that that's garbage There is so much other, as beautiful as this world is, folks, and as much time as you've heard me say, get all giddy about all types of wonderful things in this world, remember that earthquakes happen, okay? They just will, just forever Mm -hmm. and ever and ever as long as the earth has plate tectonics. Like, like tornadoes are going to happen, random fires are going to, like, there is just going, we, we live in this tiny little pocket of an existence that is actively trying to destroy everything inside of it. So let's try and cut down all the harm that comes from us as much as possible because a tornado is going to run through a town tomorrow or an earthquake is going to happen and just kill 10,000 people. Like because that stuff happens, why not take a little bit of extra effort to make sure that we're just not adding on layers of bullshit yes. and harm? Yes. Like, that seems like one of the most important things to do with our time here. Yep. Like, again, I, as much as I want Star Wars to, like, be a thing, it's probably not going to happen. So, like, fuck all that for a minute. And let's just make sure people have, like, food. Like, that yeah. seems yeah. really easy. And, and if Star Wars does happen, 
I'm not going to be thinking about God. I'm not going to be thinking about him. I'm going to be a little busy. I'm going to be busy. I'm going to be distracted. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Like, it's just, it is not. Yeah. It, you, you, so much, so much time has been wasted collectively and individually by humans. We could have solved so many issues, right? When you, so when you finally step away from all of these you know, thought stopping beliefs in, in religion and, and the supernatural realm. That is when you step into this space of realizing like, Oh shit, it's all fucked. Yeah. Oh wow. There's a lot to do. Oh my gosh. And it's like, it's like you're walking from this one party where everybody's just like having a great freaking time. There's like a couple of people running around saying like, Hey, we probably need to take out the trash, you know, or like, I don't think we have enough cups. Like most everybody's just chill and have a good time. I would have been that person. You open the door and then there's like the next room is just like people just like bleeding out on the floor, you know, and like, like soda and food just like spilled everywhere. And you're like, Oh my God, what's going on in here. And then somebody else is just like, ah, nah, don't worry about it, man. This is a great party. And it's like, no, there's so many other things that are wrong in this world. There there are people dying out there. Yeah. But there's no gay people in here, man. <laughs> there's no it. gay people in yes, here, man. That That's exactly. all we need to care about. Oh, like yes. everyone is suffering and dying. Yeah, but like, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's well, crazy. <laughs> secular rarity slash Elliot. Thank you so much for your time yes. and your wisdom and your story. It was wonderful learning a little bit more about your backstory because I've watched so much of your stuff and I feel like so little of it was focused on yourself. And I just I wanted to know more, and so I'm glad I got to learn a little bit more about you and kind of where you're coming from and, and pick your brain a little bit. Um, mm. for, for Do you mind if I link your link tree in oh, the show notes? Is that yeah, okay? Please, Perfect. Please. I wasn't sure if that link tree was just like for. Oh yeah. For no, people no. On the out inside. there, out there for anybody. Yeah. 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 So uh, then you can follow the links below and um, like, and subscribe, find them on Patreon, help us fund more secular content yeah. and have a great day. <laughs>